Hey there, my name is Drew Brashler and I wanna help you feel more confident in your production gear no matter where you're starting from. Today we're gonna to be talking about the EQ section on the Behringer X32 and what EQ is and how to actually use it. So if this is your first time using EQ, this is gonna be a great video for you today. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Now, EQ stands for equalizer. If any of you have had a car stereo at home or a stereo and you see the low or the bass and the treble or the mids, those things are actually in EQ. So as you raise or lower that bass, it's raising or lowering the low end. Or if you're taking that treble knob and you're turning it up or down, it's adjusting the high frequencies of your music. Now, the Behringer X32 has a little bit more advanced of an EQ than your home stereo. It's a little bit more advanced than the bass mid treble, but it's the same fundamentals. So, the Behringer X32 has what's called a fully parametric EQ. Now, what in the world is a parametric EQ, you ask? Well, I will answer that. A parametric EQ allows you to adjust three things, gain, bandwidth, and frequency. Now, gain obviously is taking something up or down. Frequency is going to allow us to change from the low end all the way up to the high end in frequency. And then bandwidth is something that allows us to change if we're wanting to just affect a very small amount of frequencies or a very large amount of frequencies. So we have three knobs on the Behringer X32 that we can control these with. So there are four bands of fully paired parametric EQ on this board. So let's go ahead and actually dive in and see how this works. So to use the parametric EQs in this board, all we have to do is select one of the channels and then this section is our EQ section. So we have a view button and if we press the view button in the upper right hand corner of our screen here, it changes over to the EQ. Then we can also use the page select to get over to EQ as well. Now we can see these four things are our low, low mid, high mid, and high. These are our bands. And we can also see these over on the left side in our EQ section. We have low, low mid, high mid, and high. So those are the four that we have. And then we have our three adjustments to make this a parametric EQ. We have gain, we have frequency, and we have Q, or the bandwidth. So we have gain, and if we actually go and raise or lower this, we'll notice that it's changing on the screen over here. Now, we can see that this is grayed out, which means our EQ section is not turned on. So one thing that you'll wanna do is if you're going to adjust our EQ, is you're gonna wanna turn it on. And there's two ways that we can do that. We can either press this knob right here to turn it on, or we can go over here on the board and actually press this button here where it says equalizer. So once that's orange, it will show that it's orange up here. So as we're changing this gain up or down, that's adjusting the gain. Likewise, we can go and adjust the frequency up or down right here. So that's all the way down at 20 hertz, which is in the low end, and all the way up to 20 kilohertz, which is in the high end. Now, by default, uh, your channels will have it at 10.2 kilohertz. And so we can see this K hertz, which means that it's thousands of hertz. So 10,000 hertz or 10 kilohertz. And then we get to Q or our bandwidth. And I'm actually gonna show this to you on my low mid. So I'm gonna go ahead and select low mid and I'm going to gain this up a little bit. And so that way we can see this. And as I take this and change this, we can see two things happening. One, the Q number is getting lower and we are adjusting a greater amount of frequencies here. If I take it the other way, our Q number will get higher and then we will also be adjusting a smaller amount of frequencies. So if you're trying to get rid of a piece of feedback, using a smaller Q or a higher Q number would be the right thing to do. If you're trying to get a tonality of a musical instrument adjusted, then we would want to use a wider bandwidth or a smaller Q number. The very last thing that we have on our screen up here is our low cut. Now our low cut is actually configured in a different section of the board, which is up in our configuration and preamp tab. And so we can see this up here. So if we go and press view on this, we can see that we have a little bit of information here where our low cut is. But if we keep our view on the EQ, we can still see it. So to initiate the low cut, we can either press low cut here, 
or we can press low cut in the upper left hand corner of the console. Once we do that, we can go ahead and raise this up. Now, uh, low cut is a high pass filter, which means that it is going to pass the high end. An LPF, or a low pass filter, is going to pass the low end. So that's the difference between a high pass filter and a low pass filter. Now, the low cut is a high pass filter, an HPF. And that means that it is going to pass the high end, but not the low end. And we can see that that is cutting out our low end right here. So we can use a low cut on any instruments that aren't producing subwoofer information. For instance, a hi-hat would be a great example. So that's what the low cut is. It's just going to take off all of the low end depending on where you have this set to. Now you can set it anywhere between 400 hertz and all the way down to 20 hertz. And we can see that being adjusted on the screen. Now, one thing to note about the Behringer X32, I did say that there is a four-band parametric EQ on the console. Now, that happens to be the case with all 32 channels that we have. So 1 through 16, 17 through 32, all of those have four-band parametric EQs plus low cut. But our aux in and effects returns also have EQ. They just don't have the low cut. And then any of our mix buses matrices and main buses. So left, right, or stereo, the mono, our six matrices, and our 16 mix buses all have six bands of parametric EQ. And so we can see that here in our window. We have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we have all six bands that we have to be adjusted. Now that's where we can see this low two and high two come in. So the way to get to those is we press both of these buttons. So here's one, here's two, and here's three. So low, low two, low mid, high mid, high two, high. So that's how we get to those six bands of parametric EQ on the mix buses, the buses, and the matrices. So let's go ahead and actually get some sound going into the console. I have some pink noise being generated, which will give us a very clear definition of what's actually happening with the EQ. So I now have some noise being generated by the X32 playing into this bus, and we can see that on the screen up here, as well as on Smart, which we are showing right here. This is called Rational Acoustics Smart. Um, this is a spectrum analyzer and a FFT, which is a system tuning tool. So I'm not going to really dive in on the functionality of Smart today, but it is a great visual representation of what's happening with what we're hearing. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the three different functions of a parametric EQ that we have on the Behringer X32. So first thing is first, we have gain. So I'm going to go ahead and boost this up. So we can see that it's boosted here. We can see it's boosted in smart. And we can also hear that it's boosted. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut that. We can hear that it was cut. We can see that it's cut. Now I'm going to go ahead and boost it back up and I'm going to adjust the frequency. I'm going to show you the whole frequency here. So we have all the way down at 20 hertz and So this is a fully parametric EQ allowing us to have control over the entire audio spectrum. And so we just heard a 20 all the way up to 20 kilohertz and all the way back down to 20 hertz. Now, the next thing that I want to show you is the bandwidth or the Q. And so there's two functions of our Q. We have a PEQ and a VEQ. PEQ is a parametric EQ and VEQ is a little bit more of a vintage sound, which means that we can get a wider bandwidth. Uh, as far as frequencies go. So I'm going to show you the Q of the PEQ first. So I'm going to go ahead and boost this up, and we are going to take our Q tighter or a higher Q number. So we can see that there is a very fine line that's being adjusted here. 
Now, if I take this the opposite way, we will see that the bandwidth is going to get wider, and I'm adjusting a greater set of frequencies here. Now, if we change this to VEQ, we will notice that it gets even wider. And so then if we go the other way and get to a narrower Q, it's not as narrow. So the difference between PEQ and VEQ is basically how wide of a bandwidth we're adjusting. Now, the bandwidth of the EQ makes it either more musical or more surgical. If you're looking for something to just do musical tonality adjustments, I would probably be looking for a wider bandwidth of an EQ section. If you're looking for something for getting feedback reduced in your room and trying to take out one tiny little piece of frequency that's maybe feeding back in your PA, then I'd be looking for a tighter bandwidth EQ adjustment. Now, those are what we call our bell curves. We also have two adjustments called shelf. So a shelf is going to be in our high frequency. So I'm going to go up to our high, and I'm gonna go ahead and roll over this down to about two kilohertz. So our shelf means that it is going to boost everything above this frequency. And I'm gonna show you right here. So I'm going to raise this, and I am adjusting everything above two kilohertz, and it is being boosted. I can also cut in the same way. It is a shelf, so it shows you that here's our frequency adjustment right here on two kilohertz, and it is doing the same EQ adjustment over all the frequencies above 2K. Now, the Q knob does not allow us to actually adjust anything, so we cannot adjust the Q of a shelf on the X32. Now, this is what we call is a high shelf. There is also a low shelf, and so I'm gonna show that to you on the low. Now, one thing to note about the shelf is it is only available on our low band and our high band. So those are the only two spots that we can select those from. But another thing that we do have inside of the low is we can actually go to low cut. So here we have our low cut. And this low cut allows us to go all the way up to 20 kilohertz with a low cut. and all the way down to 20 hertz. Now we can end up double upping our low cut if you use the channel low cut and the low cut of the EQ section in the low band if you want to. So we can just select between these modes using this mode button. Additionally, on the high end, we have a high cut, which allows us to do a low pass filter, which is passing all of the low end through that filter. So that's what our low cut is. Now, I know I just told you that the shelf and the low cut and the high cut and the high shelf is only available on the low and the high bands, but there's actually a hidden secret inside of the X32 that if you do this on the menu side up here on the LCD screen, you can tap into any of them on any of the bands on any of the channels. <laughs> I know that that's a lot, but if you go ahead and select a high mid, I can go and select through all of the different modes. So here's high cut, high shelf, VEQ, PEQ, low shelf, low cut. And I have those on every single one of them. And just to show you that I can do that on the channel side, I'm going to go ahead and cut the noise out here. And I'm going to go and show you this to you on the high mid of my base channel. There we have it. So high cut, high shelf, VEQ, PEQ, low shelf, low cut. Now, when you're pressing between the mode button, it will only allow you to select two on the mid bands. And then on the high shelf, it'll toggle between high cut, high shelf, VEQ, PEQ. And then on the low, we'll be doing low cut, low shelf, PEQ, VEQ. So if you're trying to get some very fancy EQ going, you can use the rotary knob that's beneath the LCD screen to get that more advanced EQ that you're looking for.
So the very last thing that I want to show you before the end of this video is how to reset all of your EQ settings. And so say you are EQing a channel and you're just like, man, I really just need to reset and start from scratch. What you can do is you can go ahead and pull up your EQ section on your screen and there is a reset knob right here. So all you can have to do is select one of the bands that you want to reset and you can press reset and it zeroes it out. The other thing that you can do is you can reset all of it. So we can reset all of our settings back to zero and you can press reset all. Now it is going to ask you to confirm this, which you can press yes, and then it will wipe it out. The only thing that this won't affect by resetting your EQ is your low cut. So if you do have your low cut turned on and set somewhere, if you go and adjust and then press reset all, it is going to keep your low cut in the same spot that it was before. So if you want to reset everything, you will also have to reach over and press the low cut button. And then you're back to zero. So that brings me to the conclusion of this video. In my next video, I'm gonna be talking about how to actually EQ a channel. Now that is something that I don't have time to go into today, but Keep an eye out for that video next time. Also, I'm always looking for questions from you guys. I wanna hear what you want me to make a video on. If there's some tricky thing that you're trying to figure out at your church, or say there's a volunteer at your church and you're like, man, I really wish that I just had this one video to send to that volunteer so they could understand how to do sound better, please write it in the comments below. I'm always looking through the comment section to find that next video that might be helpful for all of you. So thanks so much for watching.